We are diving into the stories of some amazing Nigerian millionaires who made it in Africa. Let's start with Halima. 23 years old and you own a seven hectare farm. Now, farming might not seem glamorous, but Halima has shown that it's more than just planting crops. It's about perseverance. Today, she farms rice, vegetables such as peppers, tomatoes, eggplants and more. I was born with the entrepreneur mind. <laughs> Ever since I was little, I, you know, I, I do this and that. Halima's journey began when she was a kid in Kano, Nigeria, starting with poultry farming at 10 years old. I started with little birds. That time I was around 10, 12. Started How many with, birds did you have that time? Um, I started with around 100. She eventually moved into crop farming while she was still in university. In, in my fourth year at the university, I was doing my practical year and then I started my own personal farm as well. You know, farming doesn't need a lot of capital. Okay. You can just get in since we have rainfall. It's nature. Okay. We have the rainfall, we have the, um, the weather, we have the soil. And most of our soil in Nigeria is very fertile. It's very good. But it wasn't easy. Her first attempt failed because of bad seeds. Then heavy rains washed away her crops. It was really good and then the we had a lot. It had more rainfall. Yeah, yeah, and it washed away everything. So we literally didn't turn up with anything. Despite these setbacks, Halima kept going. She's proof that even with small capital, you can succeed if you don't give up. Her message to young entrepreneurs? It's, it's, it's never too early. It's nev you're never too young. You know, if you see something, you just, just bring it out, just do it. Let's switch to Demi Samande, who is making waves in furniture manufacturing. Born in Nigeria but raised in the UK, Demi returned to Nigeria to start her business, Majors Furniture. She uses local materials and works with local artisans to create high-quality products. So we love button work. It's one of the things we specialize in. And you see a lot of our designs, although we do a lot of contemporary pieces, wow. we like to infuse a lot of buttons in our designs. So you always see tech, you always see really te techie pieces like this. We have a lot of just detail and things in it. Starting small with just a hole in the wall, as she says, and a few carpenters, the journey wasn't without challenges. Access to capital and resources in Nigeria is tough, especially compared to the West. Our biggest challenge really is about funding. You know, as, as, as a small business, we're constantly um, struggling in ways that other businesses in the West are possibly not struggling because they have access to, to funding. She uses mainly local materials, creating products in Nigeria to prove that high-quality products can be made locally. She's expanding by opening a training academy to develop local talent. Why do you want to be a carpenter? Because I have passion for carpentry. I love, I love creativity. I love designs. I love everything furniture. Oh, okay. It is important for us to support local entrepreneurs to help them grow, like Demi who leaves a message encouraging those abroad to come back and invest in their home Bring countries. Your money home. Bring your money home and keep, those of you who are already here, keep, keep your them. money home. We need it. If you think you need a lot of money to start a successful business, think again. This entrepreneur started with just 1,000 birds in the poultry industry. Today he produces between 75,000 to 100,000 chickens annually and sells 700 to 800 crates of eggs daily. Um, we have uh, 30,000 birds, laying birds. Okay. And in a day they produce about 700 to 800 crates. 700 to 800, 800 crates. crates? yeah. So uh, How much is a crate? A crate is 1,100 to 1,200. With each crate valued at 1,100 to 1,200 naira, he makes between 800,000 to 960,000 naira daily, which is significant revenue for his business. The entrepreneur was born and raised in Kano, Nigeria, and he has been in the poultry business for approximately five years. Uh, my name is Abdullah, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we've been uh, into poultry for close to five years now. Uh, we've been dealing with um, layers specifically. Uh, we do egg production, and we also do point of lay production. The main challenge he faced was the lack of initial knowledge about poultry farming, he had to rely on research, learning from mistakes, and gradually grow his business. Um, it was just not knowing um, the ins and outs of the business. Okay. I didn't have anyone to show me um, around or show me um, like a stepping stone into the business. So um, it took a lot of 
um, research, uh, mistakes. The entrepreneur advises young entrepreneurs to start with small steps, learn from their mistakes, work hard and persevere. Start with a small step, learn from your mistakes, and then it will bound to be successful as long as you work hard. Next, we have Farida who entered the textile industry. It has been a path to success for many before her. She began with just 600,000 naira, money her mother gave her to buy a car, but instead, Farida invested in textiles. I started business with just a few wrappers and 10 pieces, like for 15,000 or 20,000. That is, let's see, my pocket money. But uh, I was given 600,000 from my mom to buy a car. Naira? Yeah, Naira in Naira to buy a car. That's the last 10 years. Her business resolves around buying textiles in bulk, selling them at wholesale prices and distributing them throughout the market. She does not manufacture the textiles but imports them and handles their distribution. Yes, in first year I recorded around from 600,000. I was recording like 10 million Naira for the first year of my business. Hello, I, I, are you <laughs> Her daily earnings can reach up to 1 million naira, indicating significant revenue generation. Farida was born and raised in Kano, Nigeria, married at 18, and had a first child while in university. Her family supported her by giving her capital to buy a car, which she used to start her business in 2010. She began with advertising on Facebook and WhatsApp before establishing a physical shop. I used to, my sitting room, I used to put the wrappers and selling it at home, but advertising from Facebook. There is no even Instagram then. Yes, Whoa. only Facebook and WhatsApp. With strategies like avoiding credit sales and maintaining wholesale prices to attract buyers and reinvesting profits, she has grown the business to millions in cash flow. Everything, if it's, if it's time for you to do it, you will do it like me now. Mm. You can see I so you, I'm having a lot of cars. Mm. That time, when I when I was given uh, money for the car, it's not yet time for me to do it. Mm. <laughs> now, the godfather of this group, a high school dropout who didn't let that limit him, the founder of Innocent Car Manufacturing didn't start with a fancy education, but he had a vision. He wanted to build cars, not just assemble them, but manufacture them from start to finish, tailored to African conditions. My name is uh, Mr. Innocent Chukuma. My even name is Ife Diaso. The entrepreneur started with money earned from trading motorcycle spare parts and working in a pharmacy. He focused on producing vehicles tailored to African needs and conditions, which differentiated his products from foreign brands. Oh, one of the unique selling proposition of Innocent Vehicles mm -hmm. is that we produce African vehicles. When we're talking about African vehicles, we look at the African topography, we look at the African climate, we look at the African nation, we produce vehicles that can match us. Mr. Innocent was born and raised in a small town in Nigeria. He did not attend university but learned the business through hands-on experience and working with his brother in a pharmacy. After high school, I started trading on motorcycle spare parts. From trading on motorcycle spare parts, I built money to motorcycle assembly. From motorcycle assembly, I built money to plastic plant to support the assembly. After the plastic plant, I build money to motor plant. <laughs> so it means it's stages? It's stages. I served my brother. After serving him for some years, he established me with some money. I don't need to say it. <laughs> <laughs> he advises young entrepreneurs to work hard, be honest, and believe that Africa offers numerous opportunity for those willing to work diligently. This Africa is more open for people. It's a virgin place. You develop Africa. You make more money than anywhere in the world. Are you serious? Yes. If you are ready to work, come, I will guide you. These stories aren't just about making money. These Nigerians prove that with determination and hard work, anything is possible. So, what is your story going to be? Leave a comment below, subscribe for more inspiring stories, and remember, the only limit is the one you set for yourself.